This shit is bomb. You know what I love about these two? Is that they're only 12 milligrams. So basically one lasts you a week and then you don't have to worry about like it going longer. All right, so what we're doing tonight is we're mixing up a Pfizer Genotropin pen and it's a cartridge. And it's the water is in the cartridge, and this has never been open. And just to give you guys an idea of how fresh this is, uh, expiration date 02, uh, start it was made in 02 of 2018. Made okay, so made in February of 2018, so it was just made and it expires in January of 2021. And you can see where it is the perforated, the perforated top right here. And I'm going to go ahead and pop that so you can see. You can, hear that so it's never been open and this is pretty cool so you see what the, one of these things look like because this is the real deal for anybody who doesn't know what the real deal looks like okay so ah beautiful so when you see and you can see i'm going to actually tilt it so this slides down a little bit okay and you can see so you look at this part right here and you see how clear the glass is and you see the the, the, the compressed gh and then you see how foggy it is right here Okay, real GA sticks to the edge of the glass where it was put in there. And you can see that the way it's it's right here and then it's clear right here. So that's how it is. And here the water is already in it. It comes already in it. And so it's like the old HCG where you mix the water and the powder. So then the trick is, is how do you get the water here into the powder here? And so that's what we're going to show you tonight. And so what I do is I take a syringe, an insulin syringe. I use these. That's the ones I use. A short needle, uh, three tenths, and I use the three tenths intentionally. And it's the short needle. And this, the reason for that is, if you look on the side here, it actually has the half lines. So it not only has the zero to five and the ten and the fifteen, but it also has the half lines in between, it so you can get one point five. 2.5, whatever you want in there. It has 10 lines between each uh, one and the five. So there you go. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get the water into the powder by pushing, this is a little trick I do. This is a, it's a never been used insulin syringe. I'm just gonna stick it in the back here, okay? And push it down until the water mixes. So the whole thing's pressurized. So to push it down until the water mixes with the powder, it's not easy because it's pressurized, so. There you go. See how the whole thing dissolved? The whole thing's dissolved at the very bottom now. So real GH, the entire thing dissolves right away. Just if there's still all this water left that needs to be mixed into it. So here. Okay, so I pushed it until the rubber and the rubber meet. The rubber meets, okay? The entire thing is mixed, and then I'll slowly raise up the back. It's all pressurized, like I said. It just comes up on its own, back to where it was. This is all air now, all the water's in here. And so with GH, you wanna make sure you don't shake it or it can go bad. So you just slowly tilt it, and you can see as a little bit of a foam is still dissolving. There's no, there's no powder left in it, though. As you can see, there's nothing left in it. It's just a little bit. It's dissolving still. You can see, if you can see really close, there's some small little bubbles coming up to the top, like soda pop, you know. And they see there's no, no water in this part right here. The water was here. It went into here. It hasn't been open yet. There's never been a, nothing's been punctured on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out what would be one IU with this. Okay. Same syringe. And just because we don't know if there was any dust or dirt or anything on it during shipping or packing, I mean, if you sterile about this, use a little bit of alcohol on it to uh, just clean the end here. Try to keep my surface area clean. Okay. Now, because it was just mixed, I want to make sure that it's all dissolved. So I'm just going to rotate it. You're supposed to be very, very careful about this because if you shake it, it could turn cloudy. And if it turns cloudy, then it's basically no good. 
and it was stored in the refrigerator. It was shipped cold. And this particular brand, Pfizer Genotropin, can be shipped out of the refrigerator for, I have to check, but I think up to 60 days after it's made. So since this was made in February, uh, that would mean um, April. And since it didn't have to be imported into the country, it didn't have to sit through customs. Even if it did, if it was just made, that would be okay. But how often do you get it right after it was just made? And the proof is in the stamp. The stamp right here, so you see this, this is the stamp that was taken off. Now, the stamp is a different color ink than the ink on the, on the, on the package. And in real pharmaceuticals, they always use a different color, an actual stamp, to show the expiration date and where it was made along with the lot number on the very top, which can be traced back to the company. And this is a legitimate lot number for this particular product. So this is pretty much where it's good to go. You have to do this correctly or else you're going to end up having some GH come out of here. And so there's one CC of water is 12 milligrams of GH or IUs. So 12 milligrams, okay, and you multiply that times three and you get 36 IUs. So anything in milligrams times three gives you the IUs. 12 milligrams times three, 36 IUs. So this entire cartridge is one cc of water and 36 IUs of GH. So if you do that, the math would be that 3.334 equals one IU. And in order to do it correctly, you have to make sure that you put the needle in this way. You have to put the needle in this way. Okay, so the needle goes in this way, and then you flip it upside down slowly because you don't want to shake it. And I usually just make sure every bubble is out of it. And by pushing the plunger in all the way and drawing it out to 3.5, that's 3.5 and then you flip it back upside down okay so that the needles in the air now or else if you pull it the other way some will squirt out and then you just pull it out like that okay now there's actually a very very small drop which comes from the syringe okay and you could even see a small drop on the edge of the needle and if you just smell that little teeny bit just that little teeny bit right there, and you're going to smell a smell that's very similar to like a, a, a Band-Aid when you open it up out of the wrapper. It's pretty much what it smells like. It's a very sterile, sort of like hospital-ish type smell. It's very strong. If you've ever had some of it squirt out by accident, you'll you'll smell it. And uh, if it gets on your hand, if you just wipe it off, it'll, it'll stay there until you wash it with soap. But if you can see right there at the line where it says five and it's above the five and there's a, there's a, the half marks. So you can see that between the third and the fourth line, there's a little tick and it's right there. It's 3.5. So these are the syringes that give you the most accurate dosing of any GH or insulin. And it's because they're the shortest ones with the shortest tip. So every little drop you can get out of it. And when you're using something where three little lines, it's just 3.33, you know, four little lines uh, is uh, is one IU, you know, a, a drop of that is it, a significant amount. So, you know, considering a drop of it could be a half a line, you know, you're, you're looking at a... Uh, Nominal amount of GH. I mean, it's something that over time, if you keep losing a drop here or there, it could add to maybe a half IU or more. So here I put it back in the original or, original packaging to make sure that it doesn't get knocked around in my refrigerator so that it doesn't get sh the liquid doesn't get shaken up. And I actually put this in another container for even more stability where I keep my uh, my insulin and I keep them in the same area. Now, this shot that I'm doing right now is, is uh, going to be the shot before bed. And this shot I do... I, it's usually my food is digested at least an hour to an hour and a half is my last meal before I take this. And this is when I go to bed, try to go to bed uh, at least an hour of, of full digested, you know, without any food being in me or anything like that. And this particular shot will be used to ensure recovery from the day's workout and more fat loss. Now, when I take growth hormone during the day, 
because I've been using it for a little bit of time now, at least long enough to where it could affect your insulin levels. Although it may not seem a significant amount, I do use one unit of Humalog with one unit of GH. So, for, sorry, one IU. So for every IU of GH that I use, other than the fasted one before bed, um, I, I use one unit of Humalog. Um, I may use an additional unit of regular post-workout, but for the most part, it's, it's a very, very small amount of insulin, and it's not used to make me go hypo. I'm not even supposed to feel it, as a matter of fact. It's just basically uh, to pretty much level out the negative effects that GH has on the uh, insulin in the pancreas.